you know that that beautiful cold black you know that 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 hue that is just like you know magically glowing well you know a lot of people don't appreciate that and think that it's ugly and so I don't think that it is a matter of personal choice that people think that the human condition that anything about the human condition is ugly and so in West Africa you have this product called hydroquinone which in America in the Natanola products is only 2% it is limited to 2% or maybe 10% it's either 2 or 10 but in West Africa you know the whole reason why a lot of private companies you know like tobacco like liquor they sort of dumped um, all of their products into the developing world because there's poorer governance in a sense poorer regulation and it's also what you find here in India and so you have um, people who of course they can't afford to bleach their whole body so you have people who look like Fanta here and Coca-Cola here Fanta Coca-Cola I think there's not that I think that I got that from a song there's a song and so what, what happens is if you bleach your skin of course your knuckles and all these these flexible areas they regenerate the skin regenerates much more quickly because well they're in flexible areas that skin is meant to and so you have people who bleach and bleach and bleach their skin but they will always have these telltale signs of darker skin around them and and, and frankly they look foolish unnatural when you have people who you know they, they can only afford enough to bleach certain parts of their body and so um, it's pretty bad in West Africa. It is pretty pretty bad when you have these orange colored people because it gives you an unnatural color. It can never give you a natural color and I am very much of the opinion that it has to do with um, I can't say that it started with colonialism, but I can definitely say that colonialism and the imperial experience accelerated you know the Victorian era um, the racism that was invented to justify the racial oppression well this is the sort of thing that contributes to our mindset we're not sort of free of it it, it is a colonial mentality I mean and I list all these things these are I mean you could just basically listen to fellow Akinfilo Kuti and you could know all of what I'm talking about he has a song called Yellow Fever love that song so then down the street from my house here in India, in New Delhi, is a huge new sign from Vaseline. Um, and it says, you know, you can make your body as fair as your face. Because here in India, the same thing over and over. Fair, there's a fair skin worship preference everywhere you go. So much that, that I say that the screens are all bleached. Yeah in a sense that if you look at this, any screen, big or small, you know, moving or sta stationary here in India, the majority of the people who are, who are portrayed are fair, extremely fair skin. All the stars, the stars, so it's just, it's reiterated over and over and over again implicitly that fair skin is literally equated with cash. But should you not really get that message, all you have to do is look at the fairness commercials, the fair, uh, fairness cream commercials. And they are very didactic in their message. They will tell you, you will be more popular, you will get jobs if you have fair skin. As a matter of fact, they, you know, the one with Shah Rukh Khan calls you ugly, chides you. And it's interesting because I had a Michael Jackson um, party a few days after he died. And uh, it happened to be after an article that I wrote about uh, racism in, in India appeared in Outlook magazine. And I've made great strides, but apparently unsuccessfully, to, to talk about this, this preference for fair skin is, is not an Indian problem. It's not an Indian problem. Uh, it's not an African problem. It is a global problem. Um, of all of us, the fact that, that, that there are people who are who learn that they that they can be indifferent to others, that they that it is their birthright to have more, to just be privileged in their respective societies, or even as a global society, you know that that being white makes you somehow more valuable than um, than not. It's a global problem, and so I was a little I've you know been a little bit peeved on the previous videos that I've made where people sort of take it as an attack on India and foreigners don't understand India and it's for me that's the very same mentality that's the colonial mentality 
I mean, you have people on those videos who make it their point to say that Indians have no relationship to Africans because Africans are, and all the finger pointing. And that is it. That's the colonial mentality that, that you think that dark is doggish and fair is beautiful. Fair is handsome. Fair is lovely. Don't go in the sun, you'll get fair. I mean, it's abusive. It is abusive growing up in a brown family, including my own. My family wasn't my family very much value. I mean, my mother said they would color the cartoon, the color the cereal boxes because they didn't want just white faces sitting up looking at us in a society where, well, the difference is we're trying to decolonize our minds and to have your darkness not just not validated, not just not reflected around you, but specifically told that it's ugly. To have that all around you, my family, no. They said they were not. But I do know families in America who, who still value that. Even my own family in Nigeria, once they mentioned, oh, I'm glad that I was born um, fairer. You know, I'm one of the darker people in, uh, on the my Nigerian side of the family. And I've heard people say, say that. Um, once my cousin, I have a cousin who's fairer than me. And these are terms, we don't use the term fair in America. I'm just saying fairer. Um, but fairer than me. And when he was a kid, he lived in Hawaii. And there was this color cast there. And once when he came home to Kentucky, he was like, oh, you burnt like toast, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, okay. Uh, my mother's like, don't you ever see that to my phone would be. <laughs> and so, but you know, and my cousin has since, uh, you know, learned that, you know, dark is also lovely. Brown is also lovely, cocoa, honey. And I think it is important. I mean, when I say that we manufacture pride in ourselves, black pride, we said we're going to use words like honey, cocoa, chocolate, you know, caramel to describe ourselves. Not, not something that even, I mean, even wheatish, what people use here in India, it, it sounds, it's such a cop out. It's a, it, it's a real cop out. It, 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 it doesn't acknowledge India's own range. The only time that you see that range is like in the Vaseline commercial and the fairness meter, they literally have um, a meter from white to dark. Except of course it goes, you can reverse the signs or, you know, and this Vaseline commercial is interesting. And I go back to this Fanta Coca-Cola because the Fanta Coca-Cola phenomenon is very real here in India. My partner's um, gym, um, what do you call it, person, a trainer, is it an award-winning award winning bodybuilder. And so, you know, he shows off his pictures and and my partner says that his body is what people would call weedish and his face is fair, really fair. And so you look at this and you see his whole body and it just looks like a monster. It looks like a monster. I went to, you know, I go to a barbershop here and there are people who are already fair skin getting their skin bleach with lye. You know the stuff that people use to straighten their hair? The chemical, the relaxer, lye. That's what's also in some of the harshest creams here. And I saw a person put this in the same box. They said, you can use this to straighten your hair or bleach your skin. You just mix it up and, and that's what they did. And put it on their skin. That's what I'm talking about, people. And in Senegal, I heard of a woman who sat in bleach. You know what I'm saying? This is sick, and it's not about personal choice, it is about personal hate. And unless and until, to use the South Asian phrase, unless and until we can learn to have pride in ourselves. And not that that pride means that anyone else is ugly, but that I'm beautiful. You know, other people don't have to be ugly for me to be beautiful. I can actually look at someone who looks totally different from me and say that you're beautiful. I like, you know, your straight hair and your you know, really, really dark skin, or you're really, really light skin, and you're really, really kinky here, or you're really, whatever it is. I, I think I really am capable of loving the spectrum of the human condition. And when I see people who don't, it, it, it upsets me, it disappoints me. I pray for them because it, you know, self-hate can lead you to not only treat yourself badly, but treat other people badly. That is it, just unacceptable. And if people were to really sit and think about it critically, it's unmodern. It is just, it doesn't even sit with people's own morals and values. But they're really to sit and think through this whole fairness thing. That's it.